All right, I'm going to take a quick break from my uh, ranting here about Samsung. And I'm, I'm going to do kind of a first impressions of Star Wars Visions. I just saw the trailer for that. <clears throat> um, coming out on Disney+. Plus. And if you're not familiar with that, um, it is a... a now, well, I had no idea about this with this project. So I'm like, Star Wars Visions. And it's got a very kind of anime look to it. And I'm like, oh, okay, well... Um, I see official English dub trailer and I'm like, oh, oh, they must be doing a Star Wars style anime. Okay, well, I'll start watching it. And I hit play. <laughs> and as soon as it started, I started laughing because it's like, you can already see every stupid anime trope in it. That's just done to death. Oh, we have this sacred vow to protect this thing and all this other thing. I'm like, uh, okay. Now, of course, there is a lot of cross-culture cross pollination with Star Wars, um, which which I respect and actually hold up as a, a shining example of where cross-culture pollination uh, works and is a good thing and, and is has influences in ways you don't fully understand. Because of L Lucas has said <clears throat> that he got the original I idea for Star Wars from watching, uh, I believe it was uh, Hidden Fortress. Hidden, yeah, I think that's what it was called. And uh, it's it's an old uh, Japanese uh, samurai style movie, uh, but it's told from the perspective. It, it's during a big war, but it's told from the perspective of of kind of two kind of bumbling idiots kind of going along with the uh, the main army. Uh, those now you can easily translate those bumbling idiots is to R two D two and C three PO. Um, and, and I, I appreciate that Lucas, who has been very dishonest with certain aspects of the history of Star Wars and how it came to be, actually being honest with this and saying, oh yeah, that, that's what kind of inspired me. And of course, Darth Vader is actually patterned after, uh, a samurai. That's why his armor looks the way it does with the big kind of frill and the kind of like, uh, uh, almost inhuman looking mask, uh, because that samurai wanted to make themselves, that's why a lot of their armor had those extra, extra, uh, uh, edges to them and whatnot was it did add some level of protection but they were also trying to look bigger than they really were to intimidate their opponent and then they put these big demonic looking masks on and it was a mind game but anyway that's that that was obviously the and i mean even not knowing that you can see the influence of, of the samurai on darth vader's uh, design and again it, all that is fine that is great stuff but i watch this and i'm like Wow, this is a little too little too late. Um, and I don't like jumping on the anti-Star Wars bandwagon um, because I've already I've, I've done a couple pieces about it and about how I feel how I you know the Last Jedi was garbage and how I feel they mis mishandled Flynn uh, not Flynn sorry Finn from the get go. But they're coming out and they're doing all this like multi-media multi-venue uh, kind of genre things. For Star Wars, and I, I'm just like, it's too little, too late, guys. You've already fucked it up. You've already ruined it. You've already ruined it. The only way Star Wars will ever survive past this point, if they don't redo the move, the, the, the last three movies, is if they forget the whole, uh, if they make the whole Jedi thing a backstory. And they move on with the rest of the universe. And they ask, okay, well, yeah, we got these big wars and whatnot, but what about the average people? And that's why I liked Rogue One. I, that's what, one of the ways I think Rogue One really worked. And I like Solo, too. I, I understand why it didn't do so well. I understand why some people said, I'm just not going to go see it. I don't care. And I think Disney was oversaturating the market with Star Wars. Was, was I think that was their biggest problem. Um, but but Solo didn't deserve the hate that it got. It was it was a fine movie overall, um, even though you know you 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 could you could nitpick it, and there were definitely aspects of it that I think were objectionable about character background or whatever. But a lot of that is just not that big of a deal in the end. Um, but uh, uh, that's the only way I think they're going to move forward. And this the, you can already see Star Wars Visions is all about the Jedi and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, and I said. Back right after the, the, the prequels came out, I told a buddy of mine, actually a couple of buddies of mine, and, and they, they'll back me up on this. I said, look, here's what Lucas needs to do, because the, the prequels didn't do so well. Here's what Lucas needs to do is, whoop. yep, I'm not going to edit that out. 
that'll become a meme somewhere. Um, the the what Lucas needed to do at that point was he needed to outsource some of the writing for Star Wars to other people, and they should have made an anthology series. And this anthology series should have done could have kind of been like a Doctor Who, the original Doctor Who, where some plot lines don't wrap up by the end of the first episode. Some are two episodes long, some are three, some are four, some are five, some are six, some are seven. It just depends on what it takes to get the story told. And they should have made an anthology series and they should have basically told, they should have brought in independent writers and some, some, you know, probably famous writers too, because they even had guest writers. I mean, it's not uncommon for, for ongoing television shows, particularly sci-fi shows to have guest writers. Even the X-Files had a couple episodes written by famous authors, specifically, that where those episodes were going to fall within their their genre, like Gibson did an episode that was very cyberpunkish, and there were a few others I can't remember. And they should have said, "Okay, here's a deal: the main characters are kind of off limits. Beyond that, you know." And, and I think it's perfectly okay for Lucas to say, "Look, I do have veto power because I, if I don't like where some of these storylines are going to go or plot lines are going to go, I, I there's there's reasons why I may not want them to go there. That's okay." That's okay to, to, to retain some sort of um, um, editorial control over the whole thing. Um, but at, at the end, he should have seen, they should have had an anthology series, and it should have been broken up. Uh, they, they could have had an ongoing storyline with some of these anthology characters. You know, neither here nor there. Um, but, that's, but they should have explored more of the universe. Because I'll be honest, when I actually was going to run a tabletop RPG for Star Wars, I couldn't care less whether the characters played Jedi or not. Their enemies weren't going to be Jedi. Their enemies were going to be uh, Separatists, because I was going to set it during the Clone Wars. Because quite frankly, I, I find the Clone Wars almost the most interesting part of the, the whole Star Wars universe. There was a lot going on, a lot of story potential, a lot of action potential. Um, but it all was going to boil down to, it was there was a... You know, the separate separatists, non Sith je separatists, were going to be the main antagonists, and they were going to have very much more um, selfish, kind of greedy motivation rather than simply, I, well, I, I'm a Sith, so I'm the bad guy, so I'm going to come do bad guy things now. Um, but you know, I see things like, so so anyway, I I had said way back when that that's what they needed to do. But it never, obviously, nobody listened to me. Um, but now, that's basically what they are doing. And they've been doing um, with the, you know, and it kind of started with the uh, the, the non-main non storyline movies like Rogue One and Solo. And, and eventually they wanted to do Boba Fett and some others. And then we got The Mandalorian. And The Mandalorian is so good in so many ways. Uh, and I respect that they are... I respect the way it can parallel the main storylines with the Jedi and yet still be very grounded and not super highbrow kind of, you know, high fantasy type stuff. So I really like the Mandalorian. I like the feel of the Mandalorian. I like the Wild West feel. I, there's a lot of other uh, planets within the Star Wars universe that I think you could set an entire series on that would be cool. I, I, I'm actually looking forward to some of the other series that are, are possibly coming, that are, are going to be coming out on uh, um, Disney Plus, especially the one that is going to center around the characters from Rogue One. Um, and, oh, I can't remember the actor's name. Oh, God. And he's such a good actor. He's in Three Below, which is another great series as uh, the, one of the voice actors. And, but it's like, I'm already to the point where, you know, this is exactly what I said they should do a long time ago. But it's like too little, too late. I, I'm already done with Star Wars, and then now, granted, I was never a huge Star Wars fan to begin with, um, but I really re respected it and enjoyed it, and, and and still will watch the first three movies, and, and and they deserve a lot of the praise that they get, um, you know, um, but I don't know, Star Wars is kind of dead. It, it's a dead franchise as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I, I, I feel bad saying that. I do. But I just watched this Star Wars Visions and I'm just like, guys, you've already, this, you've already jumped the shark. Until you address those last three movies in some meaningful way, I really have no desire to continue to watch anything.
because I know it all ends like shit. It all just ends like shit. Everything, everything with this series just ends like shit. So I really feel bad. Um, I, I'm, I'm calling, you know, and I'm, I'm not gonna. Visions may be good at the end of the day, and I will probably end up watching it just to give it a fair, fair shake. Um, but I, I just can't shake the feeling that it's, it's too little, too late, and and that nothing is gonna save Star Wars at this point. Even, even with Brett Favre heading Mandalorian and and all those other projects. Star Wars is kind of just dead to so many people. I think that it is. Uh, I know Disney is gonna gonna prop this corpse up as long as possible, uh, and you may disagree with me about D Star Wars being dead, um, and then that's fair, completely fair. But I think Disney's gonna prop this corpse up for so long um, that it will never feel like it really dies, even though it's really dead, which is a shame. Which is a damn shame. And I wish Star Wars Visions a, a lot. But unfortunately, I think it's just another attempt to cash in in a way which is too little, too late. And it's going to be creatively, cre creatively dead in the water. Um, and I will, I will eat my words if, uh, if I'm wrong. And I watch it and I go, all right, guys, I was, and I'm, I'm perfectly willing to say that. But, you know, I'm kind of calling it right now that, that I, I, have, I have very low hopes for Star Wars Visions. Very low hopes. I have very low hopes for the future of the Star Wars franchise as a whole. Um, and and I, I, I'm saying personally to me, it's, it's kind of dead. Now, you can disagree with me. If you do, leave some comments and we'll kind of, maybe we can talk about it a little more.